Lutz, you have six minutes. Thank you, Ray Lutz with Citizens Oversight. Uh, as a trained engineer, I'd like to ask that the California Coastal Commission deny the permit to allow the state time to review other alternatives and to allow more thorough review of the plan. Uh, we did submit two documents to you last week, which you should have already received. I'd like to briefly cover those today. Um, the first one entitled, Let's Find a Solution for Nuclear Waste in California, covers why this is a bad site and that the California Energy Commission policy embraced by the Blue Ribbon Commission priority is removal of spent fuel from shutdown sites. The Blue Ribbon Commission estimated permanent disposable disposal was available in 2048, not 2024 as you may hear. The nuclear waste was not part of the public bargain to put this plant in. So the public does not expect for a nuclear waste dump to exist at this site. 3.6 million pounds of waste is proposed to be buried here. The industry says the technology is proven, but many elements have never been proven, such as transportation. There is no permanent disposal, so there's many loose ends. This has never, many issues are still open. Following that, we decided to look into other uh, locations, and if you can scroll down in the PDF uh, a little bit, if you'll look in the document that you have at your disposal, what we did was look for a site in California where this, this could be built a better place. We found a place in the desert on the uh, North American plate, not around um, any earthquakes. This is in, in the desert region where there isn't much around. Um, it is not in any um, sites that, that are designated as either um, uh, seismic hazards. The, the biggest hazard there is heat. It's not in a tribal area or designated wilderness. It's right on the rail line. So it can be put on a rail car at San Onofre and moved to a site like this and, and placed there versus leaving it 100 feet from the water and only inches above the water line. If you actually look at this proposal with a clear head and say, should we put it on the coast 100 feet from the water only inches above the water line for a million years, is it a good idea? Because really, once they get it in here, it probably never will get it come out. We need to stop this permit now so that we can move forward. Now, this site is called Fischl that we found. Can you move down a little bit in the document? It's in a, just a blank valley with no one around for 50 miles or more. Instead, the San Onofre site has 8.4 million people. So if a terrorist wanted to attack the San Onofre site, they would detonate a conventional weapon and you would have a dirty bomb. We would have to evacuate all of Southern California. In this area, why would you want to attack that? No one lives around it. So it eliminates the terrorist threat. Go down a little bit more in the document. Okay, this shows you the earthquake uh, lines, the fault lines, and this is in a non-earthquake area. We're putting it instead in an area where there's uh, lots of earthquake faults and lots of risk. There's also tsunami risk. There's also hurricane risk that we've seen now, lots of hurricanes coming up. Surge water, storm water, if you only have 13 inches. And in their own report, they said that the, the coast would erode 29 feet in the 35 years that they proposed. That's a third of the way up to where it is. If you leave it there for 100 feet, you're gonna have this block of concrete falling off into the ocean with radioactive casks in it. Can you scroll down a little bit more? This shows you that Native American areas, it's not in those areas, continue to go down a little bit more. And this, is, this shows you the rail line, roughly speaking, so you can review this in, in more detail. One of the issues that we found was that these canisters are too heavy to put on a conventional railroad car. It takes a, a, a really big railroad car and you have to have really good tracks, so all the tracks would have to be improved. The, these canisters have not been proven to be transportable. We need to take another look at this, make sure that any canisters that are used can at least be moved out of here. Because if you, if you designate these huge canisters, which weigh about 450,000 pounds or so, and most railroad tracks are 386,000 pounds, is that in your staff report, a review of the weight of the canisters and whether they can be moved? No. We just heard an excellent report of a, a bike trails and other things along the coast where someone spent their whole career working on it. Where's the person's career working on this? We're going to put radioactive waste on the coast with only a, a few months of review? 
and it's going to be there for perhaps a million years, please. The community engagement panel that is supposed to disseminate information that's run by Edison did not even notify us of this meeting. They're supposed to be the ones promulgating information. Therefore, a lot of the people that are concerned about this were never informed. Why did that happen? Because Edison wants to sneak this through without adequate review. That's why I'm hoping that I can implore on you today to at least delay this. There's no need to rush into this. You've got 35 years of decommissioning ahead of us. Is there a need to rush this stuff out and immediately throw it in these unproven canisters that are too big to transport on rail lines? You don't even know where they're going and no one has a plan? No. You should stop this right now and say, we're going to have more review. Let's talk to the California Energy Commission. It's their job to do this. Make sure that they chime in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Maria uh, Severson. We, no. You're going to remember that uh, we do ask that folks not uh, show their appreciation or their rejection of ideas by clapping or calling out. We have a number of speaker cards I want to give everyone the opportunity. So if folks who know they're going to be speaking next could get ready, I'd appreciate it. Welcome. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Maria Severson, and I am here as a public advocate, as a citizen of Southern California, and as a mother of three children. You are at a critical point in time. You have been asked to approve entombing 3.6 million pounds of toxic radioactive nuclear waste. Now, they, you're here because Edison has put you in this position claiming that there are no alternatives. So what do they do? They pick the worst alternative, putting it on our beaches in a populated area of San Diego County. Now, Edison has operated for 40 years at this plant, taking in billions of dollars in rates and generating nuclear waste for 40 years. But it did nothing during that time to determine what to do with that waste. They say, this is not our problem, it's the government's problem, we're waiting for somewhere to put it. But this is because Edison made no plans. They were here in 2000 asking you for an interim storage facility, and that's still interim. It's never going to move if you do this today. The commission, Edison has put this commission on the spot after greedy and irresponsible behavior. When it didn't get a license and it got the big steam generators without approval, it then, when it got in trouble and they failed after two of the 40 years, went to Warsaw, Poland and worked out a deal. Because of their dishonesty, you cannot reasonably rely on their representations. They ran the business with no exit strategy. We know that they got from the California Public Utility Commission what they wanted through improper influence, closed door meetings, ex parte meetings, and contributions. They have scorched the integrity of the PUC. Don't let that happen to this commission. You have alternatives at this point in time. Approve it, and a suit will be filed because there's no record. But the better course is, and I'll finish up now, thank you, do the hard work now. Thank Postpone you. this until they can come up with alternatives, have a meeting in San Diego County where it belongs. Thank you for and your comments. Join the San Diego County and wait for the Energy Department. Thank you. Hello, I'd like to share my time with Jasper Morgo, my son. So the two of us together. Um, I have a handout uh, that looks like this if you'd like to find it. Uh, my name is Richard Morgel and uh, I live in Ramona, California. I'd like to share with you a little history about the North Industrial Area, the site where the SCE is proposing to locate its ISFACI being discussed today. Years ago, the site was, this site was the location of the Songs One reactor. The attached photo taken in 2005, right here that you have, uh, shows the containment sphere of Songs in between the old new homes, uh, ISFACI in the ocean. In the back side of the attached photo, if you flip over and look at the attached photo that I sent you, there's a page that looks like this. And if you look towards the left-hand side of the picture, you can see a sphere. That sphere is the location of Songs 1, where it was before they decommissioned it. Um, 
a former uh, a former NRC inspector tipped me off to the fact that SCE's ISFACI is proposed to be built right on the, right next to the monolithic subterranean concrete superstructure used to support Songs One's containment sphere. Uh, is that a big deal? Well, maybe. Some of that superstructure is still there, uh, residing eight feet below the current grade, and was the source of um, radioactive tritium detected during the decommissioning of Songs 1. During the Songs 1 decommissioning, several sample wells were drilled near Songs 1, and each high tide brought increasing tritium concentrations. Take a look at how close the 12.5 foot deep Isfasi excavations are going to be next to the Songs 1 decont uh, decontaminated or uh, containment sphere. Uh, this tritium rich soil is going to be repurposed uh, and backfilled uh, for the ISFACI and the proposed attachment for the CDP. The soil was expo will expose the surrounding environment workers and beachgoers um, to um, potential tritium. I don't know how, uh, I, I would like to know what safeguards uh, SCE should include in their ISFACI plans to ensure that the contaminated soils known to be deep within underneath Songs 1 site uh, will not impede beachgoers' access to the ocean some 100 feet away from this ISFACI development. How can you say that you're going to uh, support Coastal Act Chapter 3, Article 2, Section 3021, where the proposed development will not interfere with the people and their access to the ocean at that site? It doesn't seem feasible. Please deny today's act. I'd like you. my son to be able to talk. I believe I only got three minutes total. Yep, if your son would like to speak, we'll give him one minute. Welcome, Jasper. Hi, I'm Jasper Mogul, and I'm from Ramona. And I'm here to talk about the dry cask storage at San Onofre. Okay, let's get to the problem. Since the canisters are too heavy, that means that they're trapped at songs. And my generation is, need, is going to need to move the canisters because salt corrosion might make it so that one of them breaches. Once one breaches, there will be no beach access, and then we'll have to move them. So I think you should deny any permit that includes putting casks that are too heavy in the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Hedrick, Mary Beth Brannigan, and, and Rita Kahn. Good afternoon. My name's Gary Hedrick. I'm founder of San Clemente Green, which is a group of concerned citizens, mostly about sustainability, but um, in 2010, we were contacted by whistleblowers, or concerned workers, actually, at the power plant, saying that the, the steam generator project was not being uh, tested properly. And they were concerned, but they were being retaliated against by management, so they came to us, which is shocking. Uh, since then, we've been following the story and trying to make sure the right things are done by an industry that, like was said before, has the worst safety record of all nuclear power plants in the United States. It was also mentioned that um, some of their dealings with the CPUC are questionable in terms of the le legality of the way they've been coming up with the settlement. Uh, and even the NRC is questionable because they, they turned down the opportunity to investigate what actually happened with the steam generator project. So that kind of a way for them to bypass any responsibility they may have had too. So my concern and, um, you know, I represent about 4,800 local citizens that share these concerns about um, who's going to protect us from these kind of ideas. And I know there's certain jurisdiction you have that don't apply to radiation or safety, but um, if you allow the plan to proceed as suggested, it's almost certain that we will end up with the nuclear power, uh, nuclear waste site 
permanently, as far as we're concerned, indefinitely. So what we're asking is, if you're if you're applying conditional um, approval in this case, then the things that we think should be um, part of this, I'm sorry, was they should be inspected, maintained, continuous monitoring, make sure they're transportable, and make sure they don't crack. Please Thank include those. Thank you. Mary Beth and Rita, and then Jeff Stamets. Welcome. Hi, Steve. Um, Mary Beth Brangan, Ecological Options Network, E.ON. Plus, I will be speaking for the National Nuclear Free Campaign of the Sierra Club, who uh, also recommends that the California Coastal Commission deny the application for this experimental, unproven, spent fuel dry storage system. Um, in addition to all the comments that have already been made, uh, which we agree with, I wanted to bring out that a, a huge consideration is that these Holtec um, proposed systems have high capacity. They want to put 37 fuel assemblies in these canisters with high burn-up fuel. That means they may need to be in dry storage to, uh, 45 years, even if there were a place to move it now, it would be 45 years before they'd be cool enough to move. So that means you've got to have the right storage system for them now. Um, also, the uh, current Holtec license doesn't meet the current NRC UMAX license, so the current system, because they're using a different thickness of canisters that's in the current uh, license. And uh, they also haven't, uh, the seismic evaluation that the NRC UMAC license was predicated on uh, was for fully underground uh, systems, not partially underground system. Um, so we, we definitely uh, want you to think carefully. This possibly is the most long-lasting decision that the Coastal Commission, Commission will ever have to make, and the one that will have the greatest impact on the population, health, and also the environmental and economic health of this area. Thank you. Thank you. Rita, then Jeff, then uh, Jorgen Johnson, or Torgen. Um, just wanted to let you know that Dr. Khan cedes his time to me. Okay. Has he filled out a speaker card? Yes, he has. Okay, thank you. You have four minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Rita Khan. I am chairwoman of Let Laguna Vote. And your staff is really smart. And um, they recognize in this application that there are lots of uncertainties and that they have their doubts. And that's probably why at the end of every category they have inserted one, or two, cla one of two clauses. Either they're eliminating liability for the Coastal Commission or they say something like this. Staff proposes to mitigate this doubt with special conditions that must be met in 20 years. And 20 years is a long time, and a lot of really bad things could happen in that time. So why 20 years when there is current technology available today that would mitigate all of those concerns and that is licensed in the US? Take, for example, the dry cast storage systems that were used at Fukushima. Surprisingly, they, they, were, they survived intact the, um, the earthquake of a 9.0 and the tsunami that was 47 uh, feet tall. They're vastly different than the kind that Edison is proposing today. And I brought you a visual. The, the thickness of the walls of the canisters that survived Fukushima are this thick. The thickness of the walls that Holtec plans to use are this thick. It is, yeah, right, you can hardly see it. It's a big difference and it makes a big difference as well. In addition, this system is installed above ground 
in a hardened structure, so there would be no need to harm our precious bluffs. They also are both a storage canister and a transfer canister, which means that there will be no questions. It will be ready when the Department of Energy comes to get it, and we can restore that site again and enjoy it. There, there is no history of this lasting. There's no history of the infrastructure that they want to put it in lasting because it's never been used before any place in the world in these marine uh, conditions. So let's pay attention to not only what Edison tells us, but also what Edison doesn't tell us. Like I believe that according, they did not tell you this about their their vendor that according to the Department of Justice and the Office of the Inspector General, Edison's selected vendor, Holtec, was the first vendor to be debarred as a USA contractor after a TVA power plant uh, manager pleaded guilty to felony, felony charges of accepting a bribe. This doesn't speak well for their integrity. And when the chief dry cast storage inspector for the Chicago NRC, Ross Landsman, was asked to sign off on Holtec's quality assurance, he refused, stating, this is the same kind of thinking that led to the NASA space shuttle disaster. As far as I'm concerned, Holtec has no quality assurance. The findings of the report that the government did in Fukushima said that that was a man-made disaster. Yes, due to the collusion between the governing bodies and between the utilities companies. It could have been prevented. This is your chance. There's other technologies available. God forbid an emergency could be prevented by asking Edison to supply you with all of the options, not just the one. Please deny this permit. Two minutes? Two minutes. Never enough. My name is Torgan Johnson. I'm an urban planner, Harvard trained, two graduate degrees from Harvard. I'm in North County, San Diego. On June uh, 2013, I helped organize a public conference titled Fukushima Ongoing Lessons for California. It was held down at the county administrative offices in San Diego. My wife and I invited the former Prime Minister of Japan, Naoto Kan, who was the Prime Minister in Japan at the time of the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. Prime Minister Kan, on the many conversations that we had on that trip and five other conferences that I joined him with here and in Japan, emphasized that it was the fuel storage that he and his nuclear experts feared most during that disaster in 2011. Now, Edison uses the term safety all the time when they talk about fuel, whether it's in pools or whether it's in dry casts. Safety is a relative term when Edison uses it, and be cautious. I urge you to err on the side of caution. There's no penalty if you deny the permit because you are erring on the side of caution, because there's nothing that deprives the public of its use and enjoyment of a public beach more than an industrial accident at a nuclear fuel storage facility, like the one that you're reviewing right now. You have no jurisdiction over radiological disasters, but you do have jurisdiction over protecting the use of the beaches. And I would urge you to deny the permit because this proposed system is experimental, it's unproven. Um, others have come before you with well-researched uh, uh, facts about the deficiency of this system and the questions of the system. So if anything, you should have uh, a, a shadow of a doubt about the integrity of this system. Edison's proven in the past that it has a deep contempt for a public that has concern over its safety and protection of its property. Thank two you. minutes is too short. Too important of an issue for two minutes. Thank, Thank you. you.